There is a simple shift you can make with your fulcrum that makes rebound and power possible. Even if you are a beginner drummer who's feeling confused or incapable when it comes to playing with control without getting stiff, let me teach you the simple fulcrum shift to make, three sneaky mistakes to watch out for, and you definitely wanna make sure you avoid these, as well as some simple strength training exercises to really help out your loud playing. You can do this. Hey, welcome to The Non-Glamorous Drummer. I'm so glad you're hanging out with me today. I help beginner and intermediate drummers become the musicians others want to play with and want to listen to. And we do this by teaching you the core drumming skills that really matter and help you grow a lot faster as a result. And hey, I gotta ask you a question here as we get started. Are both of your hands equal in their ability? Like, is your left hand able to play everything your right hand can play? Can it play as loud as your right hand? Can it play as fast as your right hand? Does it feel as good as your right hand? Maybe this is the other way around if you're a lefty. If not, if there is anything not balanced, if there's anything not equal between your hands, you gotta dive into my free mini course. It's called Eliminate Your Weak Hand in Three Steps. And this is a big deal because when you can overcome that weak hand, you achieve freedom. Suddenly you can play fills around the kit that were sloppy before. Suddenly you can feel much more fluid and suddenly you've got way more creative potential because you don't just have a good hand and then a hand that's limping along. You've got two great hands that can work together and play exponentially more than when it's just one hand. So if that's you, if you're having any issues at all with the weak hand, dive into that free mini course. It's in the description, three steps to eliminating your weak hand. And that's gonna help you out a lot alongside this lesson we're diving into today. All right, let's get rolling with today's lesson. All right, here is my big goal for you today. I wanna help you go from struggling to maintain control while staying relaxed to achieving that loose, fluid, relaxed power that makes drumming effortless. Just because you're playing louder or faster doesn't mean you're having to work harder necessarily. Yes, you're, you're, exert, you're burning calories, you're, you're exerting energy, and yes, you're gonna work up a sweat. If you have an Apple Watch, it's, the rings are gonna do laps. It's gonna ask you if, you're, if you wanna record an indoor run as you're playing, which is really funny and really cool at the same time. Yes, there is that. There is that level of just, you know, this is exercise. But just because you're playing louder or faster doesn't mean you have to be trying harder and straining and having a, like a pained face while you're playing. It, it needs to feel effortless. It needs to not feel difficult. And that's the idea. If, you've been, if, if playing louder and faster has been feeling difficult and strained and forced to you, that's what we want to overcome. That's what I, what I want to help you move past today. So let's dive into this. Our number one thing here. First thing, fulcrum shift, the fulcrum shift that makes rebound and power possible. This is something I've talked about before here in some of these lessons because this is so important because the problem is that the grip that we use for the free bounce, if we do this, just the super loose, relaxed free bounce where we gently drop the stick and let it bounce. That's a fundamental thing that I will teach to beginner students all the time. The grip that we use for that does not work for the grip that we use for and so that's where the disconnect is. A lot of times the trouble is we've got this grip here, nice and loose and relaxed. It's easy to be loose and relaxed when playing slow like this and not playing hard. But if we try to keep this grip the same, we end up getting this really tight stiffness and this muscle in our thumb is cramping up. It's not good. So what you've got to do to transition from quiet playing to louder playing especially, and especially loud and fast playing, is actually shift your fulcrum. So I'm a big advocate for middle finger fulcrum. I recommend you do the same. You can do index, that's okay. Uh, I won't hate on you, but I think you're gonna have more luck getting a nice, loose, relaxed grip by using middle, especially as we're getting louder and faster. So I've got my fulcrum right here for the free bounce, but what we've gotta do is shift it almost up to the palm, honestly. And the reason why, what this does, is it allows your thumb to actually exert more pressure on the stick, giving you more control, but without having to tense up this thumb muscle. Because if you're putting pressure on the stick out here, notice your thumb is having to reach further across here. It's, it's just like reaching over to your pinky. And so that muscle's tight. But if you're reaching to right here, instead of right here, it's amazing the difference that that makes. And so if we adjust our fulcrum to right here, suddenly our thumb doesn't have to work as hard. Our thumb can actually relax, not get cramped up, but yet still be putting more pressure on the stick than if we were out here. And that allows us a lot of things that we're gonna get into here in a moment. The biggest one just being that we can now put more pressure on the stick, therefore more control, which is going to help us with achieving the power 
but yet we're still loose and we've still got all of this range of motion here. And so this is how you can test this. Once you've shifted your fulcrum to here, you've got your fulcrum about this point here on the middle finger. Just with the other hand, practice swinging the stick back and forth, make sure that still works. Yes, it does feel more wide open and loose out here. We still wanna have this, this motion within our hand here, but know that we're optimizing for loud and fast. And when we're playing loud and fast, we're using more wrist. So it's not so much of this wide open, flowy sort of stick motion. Yeah, it's still gonna move some within our hand, but not as drastic. This will all make a little more sense as we keep going with this. However, there are three sneaky things to watch out for. And that kind of gets us into more of the details of this because some of these mistakes really will keep you from getting the potential rebound and power that you could be getting. And so just because you, you've done this first step, this first step is huge. And if you were to cut off the video now, I think you'll get a lot out of this. You'll be able to really go far just with this fulcrum shift. This is a, a definitely a huge thing. But if you stop there, it's possible a couple of hurdles, you might have to jump over some hurdles, you might run into some obstacles that could end up causing trouble messing you up. So we've got to cover this to be thorough here. The three sneaky mistakes to watch out for in this whole process. Number one is finger placement. Make sure that your fingers are snug but not tight. So a big benefit of this grip shift going from here to here, it allows us to wrap the fingers around more. But the, the caution here is you don't want to wrap them around tightly because if we end up with this, like, you know, knocking on a door, that's no good because we still have to have some stick motion. Even if we're playing loud and fast and we're using our wrist, we're using our arm and we're gripping a little more firmly so the stick doesn't fly out, we still have to have some stick motion within our hand. Otherwise, this just doesn't work. So probably the sweet spot I recommend is having your fingers about right here where you can see, okay, there's wiggle room for the stick. And it, here's, here's what I'll do. So if I play loud and fast here for a second and then just pause, freeze, I didn't change anything here. This is what my grip looks like. This is how much the stick is moving. Versus if we're playing you know, wide open and loose like this, obviously there's this range of motion in my hand. But back to the loud and fast. That's the range of motion. So we're definitely snugger. We've got the fulcrum up here. Fingers are curved around a little more, but they're not tight. They're just curved around more firmly. So that's what I mean by this. I don't want you to miss this. And that's why this is a sneaky mistake. It's easy to either curve fingers too tightly or not curve them enough and end up with this kind of thing and that gets really awkward. And so we wanna make sure we've got our fulcrum here fundamentally, that's why that was our first point. And then we're just gently curving the other fingers around so that it looks a little more like this. Now, sneaky mistake number two, wrist motion. So this is an interesting one. I'm gonna do my best to explain this so that it makes sense. I've worked with and, and watched so many students wrist motion while they're playing. And sometimes what will happen is they will be moving their wrist up more than they are moving their wrist down. Now, something I want you to think about, if you set down your sticks for a moment, think about which way your wrists want to bend more. Like what's more comfortable, bending your hand this way, up or bending it this way? Now, we've got gravity helping us, but okay, let's invert and go this way. What, is, what, what results in the least amount of tension here in our wrist? Bending this way, so bending our hand back, whether, whichever way you wanna turn here, or bending this way. I'm no joint expert, I'm not, you know, I'm not a doctor here, but to me, it feels a lot easier to bend my hand this way than to bend it this way. Because if I bend this way, there's all sorts of tension here, and it just, it, it doesn't feel good, it doesn't feel good. But if I bend my hand this way, number one, if I'm, you know, I've got gravity helping if I go this way, but even if I invert, it's still a lot easier to just hold my hand like this than it is to hold my hand like this. And so we always, in drumming, we always wanna be optimizing the things that we do for what is our body good at? What do our limbs naturally want to do? We don't wanna make things any harder on ourselves physically than they already are. <laughs> Learning drums is a challenge. There are a lot of challenges we have to overcome, but let's work to our strengths. The way our, our, our wrists were designed is to bend more this way than this way. So. I promise I'm, I'm getting to the point here. What I see in so many students is they're lifting like this, but they've got their arm down low to the snare or down low to the practice pad, and so there's not much room for a downward motion, but they're moving up a lot, and that's why they end up with this tension in their arms. So what we wanna actually do in our playing is not necessarily have our, our arm at the height of the practice pad or the snare. We can be a little bit higher, but we wanna get in the mindset of when we're gripping loosely especially, 
uh, if we're doing the like the free bounce, we want to have the mindset of just letting our wrist drop gently, letting it bend like this. And then as we're getting louder and faster, even then there's more of this bend, there's more of that downward motion. And so we want to make sure we're optimizing for that. I hope this makes sense because I realize this is one of those things that it looks like there's a lot of gray area. It's hard to define. Okay, we want this much downward wrist motion, this much, this much upward, upward wrist motion, wrist motion, that's a tongue twister. It's hard to define exactly what this should look like. And I can't tell you an exact amount of height above your, your drum to keep your arm. And this varies depending on what you're hitting around the kit. This is one of those things that changes. But I want you to think about that. I want that in, at least in the back of your head as a just food for thought. Something to be thinking about as you're practicing and watching out for that as you're practicing your singles here, know that you were able to open up a lot more space in your hand when playing slow and relaxed, going back to the fundamentals of the free bounce, when your wrist bends downward versus if you're staying like this the whole time. When you're staying like this, there's not a lot of space here. And so we can still apply that even as we go to the louder and the faster playing where we want to keep that as a mindset of we're not going like this, we're not lifting up high, we want to be able to have this sort of motion as we're playing. Because this is a lot easier than just going from level to up. Level to up is a strain. Level to down is pretty natural. We've still gotta have a little bit of up, so up and down like this. Just think about that. Set your sticks down and just do that with your wrist. What feels natural? How high is too high? What feels like a strain? And watch out for those things as you're playing. Just be aware of them. That's the biggest, I, I want that to be the biggest takeaway right here be aware of this. At least be aware of it. Watch your wrist as you're playing. So that can be a sneaky mistake that can really sneak up on you if you're not careful where things just get too stiff and tense here because of that. So watch that wrist motion. All right, sneaky mistake number three is actually a lack of arm motion as you're playing singles. Now, when we're playing loud and fast, yes, we want to play from our wrist. We don't want a lot of arm motion. We're not trying to go like this. And when we're playing very softly, there's not going to be much arm motion involved. But most of the time, with most playing, most average volume playing, we need to have just a little bit of subtle arm motion, really for a few reasons. And a big one is that our arm can avoid, can absorb, that's not the, avoid's not the word, absorb, our arm can absorb the shock from a single. So when we go like this, you know, the stick is moving up and down. If I try to keep my arm completely still, I start gripping stiffly and I start getting tight and tense. And so I've noticed for some students, this is the most liberating thing. As soon as they start moving their forearm just a little bit, not much, like I'm watching my arm on my camera screen right there because from my view, it's really hard to see how much it moves. But it looks like it's just an inch or so. It's not a lot of motion. We're not doing anything crazy like this. Just a little bit of motion to help absorb the stick's energy. Just a little bit of arm and that goes such a long way. So it helps things feel a lot less stiff. It helps you actually feel more fluid and loose. And it literally does help you move from drum to drum when you have that mindset. I've got other lessons in, in more depth about this, but if you're playing on a low rebound surface, like a low tune drum, edge of the ride, edge of the hats, where there's not much natural rebound, you can use some subtle forearm motion to generate what I like to call artificial rebound. I could hit my floor time here and just rely on whatever natural rebound there is, but this is what it's gonna look like. It only bounces like four or five inches, but I can go. I can grip more firmly doing our loud and fast grip, which works great for low rebound surfaces. That allows me to then bring the stick up so I can keep the stick in this smooth up and down motion with a little bit of forearm. which helps me play in time. That's the magic behind using some motion, establishing a repetitive motion. It allows you to play much better in time without having to think so hard about it. That applies to any low rebound surface and even if the surface has rebound, like the ride symbol. Allow your arm to move. It is a huge mistake to not allow arm motion. That is a natural thing we want to allow. We just don't, we don't want it in excess, if that makes sense. It's kind of like salt in your food. You know, you gotta have a little bit of salt, otherwise it doesn't taste very good. You gotta have a little bit of arm motion here and that goes such a long way. Make sure that you avoid that sneaky mistake of trying to only play from your wrists. I know academia tells us play from your wrists and I agree with that, it's true. We need to play from our wrists. That's where most of the motion needs to happen and the stick within our hand, obviously, but also a little bit of arm motion helps so much with achieving fluidity along with that relaxed power that we're talking about.
All right, so let's get even more practical with this as we wrap up. I wanna give you one exercise as well as one not exercise <laughs> to, uh, to do to help increase your power and your strength. Because once your grip is optimized for power and rebound, you may still need to increase your physical strength. And by physical strength, I don't mean bodybuilding. I mean, look at me, look at my arms. I'm not huge and muscular, but I've got all the strength and the power I need to play what I wanna play. And so it's not so much a quantity of muscle, it's more of this agility and just training your muscles to do these things that you need them to do, which is not difficult. It doesn't take that much time. And hey, if you happen to be a bodybuilder, you're probably you know steps ahead of us in some way or another because you've got the strength there, obviously. So what we wanna do is intentionally work out our wrists to accelerate the process. And there are two ways we can do this. One is with a very simple exercise, and then the other is with what I like to call a not exercise, because I want you to think about this for a second. Why is, most likely, assuming you're a right-handed person, why is your right wrist stronger than your left wrist? If you just think about that for a second, it's probably because you've been playing a lot of songs that involve right-hand timekeeping. And when does the left hand ever keep time? Never, unless we're trying to play open-handed or unless we're a lefty, in which case maybe our right hand is the weak hand. So the timekeeping hand ends up getting really strong while the not timekeeping hand stays kind of weak, specifically talking about wrist strength and forearm strength. You might even notice that one forearm is bigger than the other. That totally happens. So why is that? What is it that we're doing when we're keeping time? I, I, I'm acting like you're here in the room with me. Uh, I'm waiting on you to answer. Singles, we're just playing singles. It might be eighth note singles, it might be quarter note singles, it might be 16th singles, depending on the tempo of the song. But most of the time we're playing singles, repetitive singles over and over again, hundreds and hundreds of notes in each song. Meanwhile, the left hand might just be playing backbeats. Those singles really strengthen our wrist. So what does that tell us? The more songs you play, the more time you spend just you know, logging time on your instrument, the stronger the timekeeping hand is going to get. So there's a great non-exercise to practice. Play songs, spend time on your drums, have fun. However, that left hand might get left behind. And so the exercise to practice is singles. Practice singles with the left hand or challenge yourself to play open-handed. Honestly, that is the best. If you can challenge yourself to play open-handed and start playing songs open-handed on the hats, there you go. You're working out that left hand while playing music. And that is ideal because playing music is so much more fun than playing exercises. So many of you are here at the Non-Glamorous Drummer because you're tired of exercises and drills and all the stuff that's all over YouTube. You wanna play music, you wanna play songs. That's where I'm coming from. I'm not a drummer because I like rudiments. I'm not a drummer because I like fast playing or double bass. Those things are great and they're fun to a degree, but we're not machines, we're not computers, we're people, we're humans with emotions. We're created to create music, we're created to create, let's be honest. And so we wanna create, we wanna have that emotional, sort of creative process, and so that's where music comes in. That's probably why you got into the drums, because you wanna play music. And so it's so important for music to be a regular part of our practice. It's just that sometimes if we're not careful, if all we play is music, then certain elements of our technique will get left behind unless you intentionally target them. So the exercise to practice with that left hand, with that weak hand, is just singles. And of course, dive into the weak hand mini course I told you about that's totally free, and it's gonna really help you with this and give you even more specifics. And then if you want to play open-handed, that's even better. Specifically in regards to these left-hand singles, practice eighth notes at about that 100 to 140 BPM range. So I don't have a metronome going, but 100 beats a minute is about right here. Play them nice and loud and strong and challenge yourself to eventually work up to 140, which would be about... And that alone is a great workout. If you do that for 30 seconds to 60 seconds, even on a bouncy practice pad like my Aquarian Super Pad, you're still gonna, you're gonna feel some burn eventually, especially if it's your weak hand. All the while, make sure you're doing exactly what we talked about with grip. You're avoiding the three sneaky mistakes. You're applying what you've learned. You're practicing actively where you're thinking and you're listening and you're paying attention to what you're doing. And then, as you're getting these up to speed, challenge yourself to put a towel over the pad. This one is folded once, so two layer towel a little bit less rebound, and then as you get stronger, okay, fold it again, four layers. Now we're starting to get a workout. You could also do this on your floor time. You could do this on the edge of the hi-hats. On You could get loud and crazy and do it on the edge of a cymbal, but that's loud and crazy and I probably don't wanna to listen to that. You get the idea. 
You wanna be building strength and gradually doing this on lower rebound surfaces. And that is how you get both of your hands balanced. That is the quick answer for how you get both of your hands balanced where they're both playing with relaxed rebound and power. But if you feel lacking in any area with that weak hand, with that left hand, uh, or that right hand if you're a lefty, then dive into my three steps to eliminating your weak hand mini courses. Totally free, it's three lessons, just step by step breaking down. Here's exactly what you need to focus on. It gives you all the detail and the exercises and things to practice to really get your hands equal so that you're nailing fills, moving smoothly around the kit and just sounding awesome and not having to worry about a weak hand. That's very liberating. So hey, closing question for you as we wrap up. What grip adjustment do you need to make right now to increase your power, looseness, and control? Of, of everything we talked about today, could you identify a, oh, you know what, maybe I should change that, or maybe I should work on that, maybe I should stop doing that, maybe I should focus on that. What are you thinking? I'd love it if you'd share that in the comments. Let's get some conversations going here about how we can improve our grip for power and still have that loose rebound. I hope this lesson has been valuable to you. I hope this has been super helpful. Thanks so much for hanging out today. This has been a lot of fun. Go and be awesome drummers. Know that you can do this. Go play the music you love, become great musicians, and go enroll in that free mini course. It's gonna help you out a bunch. Thanks for watching today. Stay non-glamorous, and I will see you on the next lesson.